Hello everybody, it's Ashley Fields with Yard Arrest. Today we are going to be working on our fish. This is going to be a two part video. So right now we're gonna do part one and we are going to be working on the teal version. So give me one second and let me get everything set up. Um, this always takes a couple of minutes. And y'all, every time I get on live, I swear my um, technology does not want to cooperate. So, hey Debbie, how are you doing, babe? So good to see you. Y'all, I feel like I haven't been live in, I don't know, probably I'd say a week, maybe more, I'm not sure. Uh, so, I've been missing you guys. I'm glad to be here today. I gotta turn this volume off. There we go. Y'all, I'm feeling rusty this morning as far as this technology. Uh, da, 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 share, share. Okay, I'm trying to get it all done. All right, I think we're good. Got it shared everywhere. I need to get it shared. Good morning, my dear. All right, uh, so this has to be done in two parts because I cannot base coat uh, my fish until I do the blending because the blending makes such a big mess. All right, so here's kind of gonna be that look we're going for. We're doing the teal color. Uh, let's see, Debbie says, it seems like forever since you were on. I know, I know, it really does feel like it's been, it's been a while. Um, I've been a busy girl, y'all, busy gal. Uh, so we are going to do the uh, teal coloring. Uh, so I'm using a, a combination of teal, seafoam green, and sky blue. Now on this sample, I did not put white in the middle. I actually went back into teal, but I, I prefer to go to white in the middle so that it fully fades. Um, this one, I didn't do that, but all the other ones I did. So we're gonna actually do that today with the white in the middle. But if you wanted to do the teal in the middle, like the sample, all you gotta do is use teal in, instead of white whenever I'm switching colors. So I'm gonna just move these out of my way. Today I'm gonna to be using my uh, Crafter's Choice uh, flat tip brushes. These are all three quarter inch. In fact, I need to grab a fourth one. Hold on one second, y'all. I just um, washed, just washed all these brushes this morning. And so once I wash them, I don't put them in my cups because if I stand them up, that water that's in my bristles is gonna go down into that ferrule and we don't want that happening because that can get that glue taken out of your brush. And that's never a good thing. All right, so I'm gonna have four of them. I'm gonna have one for each color. You don't have to have one brush for each color. I feel like it's just much easier um, if I do that and I don't have to kind of use a napkin as much to pull all these colors out. Good morning, Dorothy. How are you doing, my dear? Good morning. Uh, let's see, Mary pinned the uh, blank up there in the comments for us. So if you guys are interested in this blank, you can find it there. All right, y'all, we're gonna start with our dark color, so teal. I'm gonna go ahead and get me some on the plate. I'm gonna go ahead and just get all my colors on the plate. Teal, uh, seafoam, sky blue, and white. Now, guys, if y'all don't like the teal color, that's fine. You could do purple, pink, yellow. You could do any color, green. You can do any of the color schemes that you want. All you're really looking for is, is colors that are kind of in that same family together. Colors that will be a good contrast with one another. Um, so that's why I chose these colors, but y'all, you could honestly do any, any colors you wanted. All right, now my brushes are wet. Um, if you are just working on blending, definitely, 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 you're gonna want drier brushes. It's harder to do when they're wet. I'm trying to kind of get that excess out of them, but you know, I just washed them this morning. Okay. So I have just one coat of white as my base, just one coat with a roller. I did not put it on thick. Um, I just needed something for this paint to adhere to, but I didn't want it so thick that it's glossy and this paint's gonna just, you know, kind of slop off on the top. So I'm basically just loading that brush and I'm gonna just start with um, my line all the way around my perimeter. Now remember, whenever you're doing the blending, it doesn't have to be pretty because we're gonna come in here and blend it anyway. So even if it looks kind of funky when you're putting it on there, no worries. We will get that all kind of cleaned up here pretty soon. All right, so I got that teal on there. Now I'm gonna put this brush down. I'm gonna grab a new brush and I'm gonna go into my next color. I think, I wanna say yeah, I did seafoam next. So next is gonna be seafoam, same thing. 
load my brush and basically I'm doing a, a like a, a, a stripe right next to where I just put that teal in I'm not even trying to touch that teal yet if it does touch that's okay but I'm not trying to all right so I've got my two colors down so far now I'm gonna blend each time I get a new color I'm gonna start blending so I'm gonna keep the seafoam green brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this tip that I already got a little bit of teal. I'm gonna keep the teal on one side, okay? So I'm gonna kinda of start coming over, I would say maybe a quarter inch into that teal. I'm not going that far into it. I'm just going into it just a little bit. And the good thing about, the thing I really love about blending you guys is that if it's coming out and you're like, oh, I'm not sure, I don't like that, or that's not blending very well, or maybe I took that blending brush too far over, okay, no worries. Go back and, and come in with your other brush and just bring in more color wherever you feel that you need it. So it's literally just kind of going right back over top. Those same kind of swipe. Notice every time I'm putting this brush down and picking it up, I'm beginning and ending in the same place. I'm beginning here on my mouth, pulling it over. I've just taken kind of that tip of that brush right here, just maybe this much of this brush into my teal and blending every time. I bring it all the way around until I end at the mouth. All right, I'm liking this stripe down here, or the swipe's kind of at the bottom, but right here at my face, let me show you guys up close. Notice like right here, I feel like I've got a little bit too much seafoam kind of brought into that teal. This is exactly why I don't wash these brushes out. I'm switching back to that teal, kind of pull that back through, and then go right back to that seafoam. You want to do this when it's wet because you cannot blend the colors if it's dry. Also, y'all, we use um, we use uh, semi-gloss sheen on our paint. If anybody out here um, does their own stuff, it's I think that I I don't use flat paint, uh, but I do think it would be a lot easier with a flat paint as opposed to a semi-gloss to do the blending. Um, that's kind of my hunch, but I've never actually switched because then that would require me to buy you know, 38 gallons of a flat sheen, and I just obviously don't want to do that. All right, so there is that seafoam green kind of blended into the teal, all right? So again, I'm not washing this brush out. I probably will need it again. I'm just gonna set it down, go back to my plate. I did teal on the outside. The next color I did was seafoam. So now I'm gonna switch and get that sky. Pick that sky blue up, and again, Come in, and all I'm doing right now is just making a stripe close to my uh, seafoam. This part does not have to be pretty because it's gonna it's gonna get all changed up anyway. So I'm just kind of bringing that in a little bit. I might even want to bring it in just a little bit more because here in that center we're gonna end up going to white. So I really want to keep as much color in here as I can. All right, so have that sky blue brush, same thing. Um, now I'm just taking that sky blue and starting to blend it in towards that seafoam. So every time I lay this brush down, I'm laying it down in the mouth and pulling it all the way through till I get back around to the mouth. Over and over and over, same swipe. The reason I do the same swipe over and over is so that number one, my stripe or my my um, my colors look fluid, right? I don't want I don't want to be able to see in my piece every time I've picked up and put that brush down. So I'm starting here in this mouth, pull it all the way around in one swoop, and I'm ending in that mouth. This is exactly why I haven't base coated yet because as you can see, it, you're going to make a mess all over everything. So you're going to do your blending first, and then come in and do your base coating. Uh, Mary says, if you want to know all of the tips and tricks of glittering, click on the link above. Yes, y'all, there is a uh, glittering tutorial. As y'all know, we don't put glitter on um, anything other than Christmas, but if you guys want to learn how to glitter, we do have a link provided for you. All right, what I'm looking at right now, I like the blending look, but I'm, I'm kind of seeing that I don't have much seafoam left. Let me show you guys. 
that seafoam almost is disappearing in between there. So what I want to do is go back to my seafoam brush. Remember I used this one to blend so you could see some of that teal in there. So I'm gonna get my napkin, I'm just gonna pull, pull some of that paint out. And I'm gonna go back, get a little bit more seafoam because I don't like how skinny that stripe has become and bring some more seafoam back in. I definitely do not have enough on my brush. So let me get a little more. Bring some of this right back in. Ooh, yes. Okay, y'all. I'm going to keep this uh, seafoam. And now I'm kind of blending the seafoam into that uh, sky blue a little bit more where you can... I just want to see that seafoam a little bit more than I was seeing that seafoam. So I'm just kind of taking it and again, blending it back out. This is that nice part about the blending is if there's something you don't like, if you want to, you know, maybe make your stripe a little bigger, or you don't like the turnout of it, no worries. You can keep on doing it until it gets to, to where you want it to be. I'm looking, I think I'm liking this. Now I'm gonna switch back. I'm gonna just grab that light blue, uh, I mean, excuse me, that sky blue and just again, kind of touch up where these lines are meeting. I really, really, really am obviously doing this so that these lines can blend. So I want to make sure that it looks fully blended before I move on to my next color. You can't blend them if you're allowing them to dry. But look how much better that's looking now. Now I can see my colors and I feel like it looks a lot better now that I came in and added a little bit of sea foam to it. Hey Chelsea, how are you? Hi Cindy, hello y'all. Y'all, this is um, obviously, you know, blending tutorial. It's very, uh, you have to really be paying attention and really be in it. So if I'm missing any questions or comments, I will definitely come back. And I know Mary's here, so she can obviously help. All right, so I had teal, sea foam, sky. Now I'm gonna switch to white. Again, in my sample, if, uh, the sample I showed you guys at the beginning, the sample that I used uh, for the photo for this live, at this point, I came in with teal and, and kind of went back to dark. I went you know, dark to lighter um, blues and greens and then back to dark. But I really like it when it's white. So I'm, this one, I'm just a little different. All right, all I did was just put that white in there, okay? Kind of filled in that space. I'm, I'm gonna keep this white brush and I'm gonna start taking just this tip, a little bit on that tip, uh, into my sky blue to start blending the white into that blue. Um, now, your eyeball that you have here on the fish is a great place for starting and stopping because we know that we're going to paint over that anyways. We know we're going to come back in here and um, uh, repaint this eye and obviously do, you know, our regular eyeball. So that's the thing whenever you're blending is you kind of almost need to find a start and a stop point um, that isn't going to mess up you know, the look that you are going for. Just a few more times, y'all. See, I feel like I might need to come back in here with some sky blue. Let's see, hold on. Y'all, this is one of those things you just gotta keep kind of working it, working it, working it, working it. I like it, I like it a lot. Okay. Those colors are really blending well together. I'm seeing here now that I'm actually kind of looking up here. Where is that? Some of this, I'm like, oh, you know, I think I need to come back in. Let me get that. I'm going to get that sky blue one more time and come right up to those white lines and just kind of smooth that out, right? I don't want to be able to see those strokes. I really want it to look very fluid. So it's just kind of... You know, you play with it, you mess with it. Um, there's no, you know, perfect way to do it. It's really just kind of sticking with it and continuing to, to work with it. What do you guys think? Do, 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 do. The only difference, like I said, between this one and my sample is here in the middle, I went back with teal. So I kind of went teal, um, a sea foam and sky and then back to and then I went actually I, I went sorry this one is teal uh, sky sea foam sky teal so I kind of did it a little differently 
Uh, this was the very first one that I painted and all the rest that I painted, I ended up doing white in the middle and I felt like it looked better as an end result. So uh, let's see, Debbie says, that's the trouble that I have with blending. Uh, Debbie, are you talking about just keep on working with it and going over and over, you know, until you kind of get it where you want it to be? Blending is very much something, you guys, that uh, just takes some time and it takes some practice. And the really, really good thing is if you don't like the way it looks, let it dry, walk away, come back, and paint right back over top of it. You don't have to, you know, restart or anything like that. Just let it dry and go do it again, you know? No big deal on that end. Uh, since you guys are just hanging out with me, I am, let me go ahead and get some of these colors on here. I can't do the eyeball right now. That mouth is still really, really wet, but I can go ahead and get my pink on um, my fins here. Now I just used a light pink. Let me grab it uh, over here. I just used a light pink and the, the whole way that I kind of figured out my color scheme is I honestly looked at the color wheel of uh, complementary colors for the, the teal and uh, pink and yellow were my complementary colors. Oh, y'all, see, I'm already pulling teal into that pink. I think I, I picked it up on the side over here. i to be careful with that. So I'm just gonna get that pink, y'all. This is just a mop brush, this is base coating. Y'all usually don't see me base coat on a live. I usually do that beforehand. Uh, but this one, I don't have a choice as far as it has to be a two-part live. Um, there we go. So I'm just getting a little pink on here. And then what we'll do is this afternoon, I'm going to come back on and we'll finish it up. I have to have it dry because I'm going to use um, some chalk to draw those scales on here before I paint the scales. And so in order to do that, it has to be dry, 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 dry. So after I get off this video, I'm going to take this piece and set it outside in the sun, let it get dry, and obviously I'll just have to get the, um, the white put in my eyeball and the white put in the center of the mouth and the yellow on the mouth, and then I'll be good to come back on and do part two. Uh, Cindy says, I'm in love with the colors. Thank you, Cindy. Cindy, this one's so fun to paint. Hi, Claudia. Um, I Honestly, this has been one of the funnier patterns, I feel like, because... There's really no perfect, you know, right or wrong. Uh, there's so many different ways that you can go about doing this fish. You don't even have to do blending if you don't want to. If the blending is too much of a, a, a challenge or maybe it, it, it frightens you a little bit, that's okay. Why don't just, you know, paint it a solid color. I um, have obviously started doing a lot of blending recently because I just, I fell in love with it. You know, I kind of was playing with the whole technique and then I really like it. I enjoy doing it. And so, you know, now I'm like, man, I want to do blending on everything because it's fun to me. So uh, let's see. Uh, Cindy says, do you have several different colors already made that we can come by and see? Uh, Cindy, great question. So I have teal. All right. That's the one we just did. I call that teal. Obviously it has teal, sea foam, sky. It's got a couple different colors. Let me move this. This one is uh, a pink version. So what I did is I started on this outside with shading pink. Then I took shading pink and light pink and mixed those together to get the next color. It's almost like a Pepto-Bismol kind of color. And then I used my light pink in the center and then I blended that into white. So every time I'm doing four colors, uh, sometimes it does require me to mix paint. So shading pink, a mixture of shading and light pink, light pink, white. All right, and then I have uh, this one, a yellow version. Uh, this one I started, I want to say I actually started with Astro's orange. And then I went to, is that Astro? I think it is. I think that's Astro orange, I mean not Astro, Asterisk orange, number 17 Asterisk orange, then shading yellow, then yellow, and then white. Cindy, I also have a purple version that is a painted version on online. I can, I'm happy to post pictures in the comments down um, on this video for you. But that purple version, I kind of started with that dark purple. I did a mixture, or the shading purple, excuse me. Did a mixture of shading purple and light purple for my next color. You know, light purple and then white. So every time it's four colors, white and then three of your, the color family that you are working in. So, hey Dee, how are you doing, babe? So glad you're here. We just got done with the blending, y'all. Uh, like I said, as soon as 
This one gets completely dry. I'll come back on and we'll finish it up. It won't be long. All we gotta do is draw some scales on here. You know, do our scales and a little, oh, here I am touching this. <laughs> do a little bit of shading on our fins and our mouth and this one will be wrapped up pretty quick. So I hope you guys can join me back this afternoon. Um, I don't have a definite time. I'm gonna try to, let's say around two is my goal. Uh, but if I have to go a little bit earlier, a little bit later, that might have to happen. But you guys will see me this afternoon to finish this up. Cindy says, I'm in love with all of them. That teal is my favorite. Purple is my favorite color. Yes. Cindy, I'll post those photos. Um, they're not the same size as the blanks, the photos I'm going to post. I painted some that are bigger than these blanks. But I'll post them in the comment section, and you can take a look at that purple uh, version. Um, so thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. Y'all come back this afternoon and we will finish up our fish and I will see y'all then. Bye everybody. Hey everybody, it's Ashley Fields. We're back for part two of our uh, fish blank. Uh, this morning we did the blending on uh, this fish that I have right here. Um, I had to let it dry and just come in with my colors and put those right on top. So now we're going to uh, do our finish work. So let me see, I'm trying to get all my stuff open and going. And of course, you know, I always feel like um, whatever reason, every time I, I hit the button and I actually go live, everything starts moving really slow on my iPad. Hey Debbie, how are you, my dear? Thank you for coming back. Okay, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna like seriously look Hop right into it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I need, I need to go ahead and get my shading. Actually, what I need first is my Windex. Let me get my Windex and I can Windex this off right quick. Because it sat for a little bit, um, even though it's only what, I don't know, uh, three hours, whatever it was, I can still end up with a lot of uh, dust and, and things on top of here that will make that paint separate and I really don't want that. So a little bit of Windex. We're going to get some shading on the mouth and the fins and then we're gonna start working on our scales and outlining. So uh, I'm gonna use a number 12 shader and on this pink, I have a light pink as my base. Um, and so usually we only have two kind of pinks, right? You have light pink, which is on that base, and then you have shading pink. These are the only two tones of pink that we have in our uh, 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 paint collection. So this right here is a mixture between the two. And if you were actually trying to do a pink fish, you would want to do this mixture as well. I almost call it like a Pepto pink. So I'm going to use the Pepto kind of pink to do shading. And then instead of doing black outline like we did on this one when it comes to my fins i'm actually going to use shading pink outline so we're going to keep the black in the center and then uh, do shading pink on the fins and then stick with that shading yellow on the mouth all right so uh i got that paint y'all this is a number 12. um it doesn't this does not have water added to it but let's just see let me first make sure I'm in the camera angle. Hi, Ava. How are you doing, babe? So glad that you are here joining me. Y'all, it's such a gorgeous day outside. And, uh, you know, it's Mother's Day uh, weekend kind of here coming up. And I am just having such a good week so far. I hope everybody else is too. I've really missed you guys. I've not, uh, I've not been painting there as much recently. Or it doesn't feel like I have. And so... Um, Getting to come and see you guys is, is, feels like such a treat because I've, I've really missed it. All right, so on this fan, I'm trying to like look at the one I already did. I kind of just took my brush and just did like a little, one little stroke on there. I don't even know. Can y'all see that? Okay, I think you can. It might not be as, as dark, but yeah, I hope everybody's having a good week. What do you guys have? Uh, y'all got plans for the weekend? Um, we, my husband and my daughter, um, asked me the other day, they said, what do you want for Mother's Day? I said, I want to go to church and I want to go on a hike, you know, do something as a family, uh, together y'all. Cause we've, we're not physically active and we really should be. And so we keep talking about, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But yet we, we still don't do it. So I'm like, let's, let's get on it. Hey Amy, how are you doing love? Hope you are well. 
All right, y'all, I kind of just came in around that uh, perimeter here. Now I'm gonna take the my brush and I'm gonna just use that paint that I already have in it and I'm just gonna kind of swirl it back and forth. Little swirls like that. And then whenever I come in with my, um, my script liner, I can always obviously kind of touch this up and make it look, you know, more crisp, defined, that sort of thing. This is just kind of getting that starter color down. All I'm doing is just kind of taking this brush and go, my plans are to have this baby. Oh, Amy, I totally forget. Are you, you are at the end of your pregnancy, huh? Baby number three. That is so exciting. What a blessing. I hope everything goes well with labor and delivery and you come home with a nice, healthy, beautiful baby girl. Y'all on this one, obviously I'm just doing a little perimeter shading, nothing crazy. Um, I'm not actually going to take that shading right here. Uh, right up against that teal. I'm going to just leave it towards the top. I guess I got a dog hair in here. It's underneath my paint. I was about to try to get it out, but it ain't happening. Ava says, my son flipped his car. Um, he, he didn't get here. I'm so sorry, Ava. Or, he, or that was your gift. Oh my goodness. I am so sorry, hon. Ava, I hope that he's doing okay. Um, Amy says, yes, 37 weeks on Tuesday. That is so amazing. So happy for you, my dear. Super happy for you. Y'all, I've, uh, I've always thought that I would have another child, um, but you know, it just didn't work out in, in my favor. And um, now my daughter's 11 and I'm like, you know, who wants to restart when your, your kid's almost a teenager? Um, so, you know, it didn't work out for me, but I'm, I get su super excited seeing other people having babies. I love it. So, uh, y'all, this one, um, I'm obviously just going to clean out this brush right quick. I'm going to get a little bit of um, shading on the mouth, and then we can start doing our outlining. This fish, honestly, I think it looks harder than it is, but it's so much fun. The blending part is honestly, it's, it's easy once you get the hang of it, okay? If, if you're trying to do blending and you're struggling with it, my advice to you is is do what you can. If it's not looking good, stop, walk away, let it dry, come back and start again. Yes, Amy says her, her oldest is 10. I, girl, and you have one in between. Uh, I know, Amy, you've got a 10 year old and I know you have one, another little girl. So at least you know it's not such a big difference. Ava says, my daughter's 34, my son is 19. I cannot see that comment down up there. I don't know why it won't let me. I'm trying to click that see more thing and it will not there we go oh okay so my daughter's 34 and my son is 19 y'all we got lots of mamas in here i hope y'all have the most wonderful mother's day weekend all right y'all we're gonna now get that um yellow shading yellow i'm about to say yellow shading this is shading yellow i do have a little bit of water mixed into it i like that especially when i'm shading and outlining I just feel like it helps me get longer and more fluid um, brush strokes. Kind of just gonna follow that around. And don't worry whenever you're doing this if it's not perfect because we are gonna clean up these lines um, with the shading yellow on a script liner. Oh, I did that wrong, darn it. I did this one on the inside. I was really supposed to do it up here on the top. Oh well, it's all good, we'll make it work. Y'all, sometimes uh, when I haven't, you know, when I'm painting on a live, a lot of times I've done those blanks, you know, months in advance, or at least weeks in advance. So then when I'm actually on here painting, I'm like, what did I do? I have to kind of look back at my example. Amy, Cora's four and a half. Okay, so you got 10, four and a half, and you're about to have a newborn. You've got a lot of space in between. I think that probably makes it a little easier, I would assume. But that's super awesome. I'm happy for you guys. Let me get to the blow dry right quick. We need to, we need this to just get dry enough that I can start coming in with that strip liner. It doesn't have to be dry, dry. Just dry enough so that I, you know, I can get that chalk in here and we can start getting our other colors in here. Of those of you guys watching, has anybody tried um, blending? And if so, what are your thoughts on it? My thought is kind of like blending is in comparison to outlining or shading. I think blending is easier, uh, you know, but 
And again, y'all, I do this for a living, so, you know, I've been doing it a while. And uh, I guess since I'm on literally practicing constantly, you know, things for me, I guess they get a little bit easier pretty quick. All right, I'm going to turn this sideways. And we are going to draw on our scales. I'm just using Crayola chalk. I got this at Hobby Lobby for two bucks. Um, I've never used any other brand of chalk. In fact, I think it was Jackie Watkins with Little Blessings Creative Crafts. She had talked about using uh, the Crayola brand. She said it worked a lot easier. So I just went straight to Crayola. Never tried any other brand, but I'm sure you could use anything. Hi, Teresa. How are you doing? Debbie says, blending is hard. Debbie, we are going to have to work on that because I, I think I can make it easier for you. Just give you a couple of tips and tricks. All right, y'all. I'm going to use my chalk to draw my scales. Okay, you can, um, you can draw, like the, these scales are kind of small on this one. And then like this one, they're a little bit bigger. Um, I literally did that by hand. I did not even use chalk. So it's kind of one of those things that'll come out, you know, you can make them smaller scales or you can make bigger scales. Um, I'll also let you guys know, yes, I know my scales are going to be backwards. I think it looks better backwards. Somebody has called me out on that. And uh, so I'm doing them backwards because I like the look. But if you want to do them the other way, you always can. Uh, Amy says, I've not tried it yet, but you make it look so easy. Y'all, just practice, 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 practice. I've been working on some peace gnomes. I actually did, after I got off the video with you guys, I did um, eight of these peace gnomes. I want to show you this hat. I had to simplify this, the hat because it was just too much work. You know, but I did eight of these and it took me, I'd say it probably took an hour. And I did a, a more of a light blending. I really didn't try to go too much, just enough that it looked, um, you know, it looked okay. And so I get it. I know the blending is not the easiest thing. It really, really takes some practice. But once you kind of get it down, it's not so bad. Lupe says, you make blending look so easy and it's not. I'm sorry, Lupe, y'all. Okay, so me, what I'm hearing from you guys is that blending is hard and perhaps we need some more tutorials on it that are maybe slowed down a little bit more. I think that might be more beneficial for you guys. Yes, okay. Hi, Teresa, how are you? All right, y'all, let's get started with the, the chalk. I'm gonna start right here, kind of in the middle of this back fin. I don't know if it's probably got a certain name. We're basically doing the letter C, okay? So I'm gonna start right here in the middle and make a letter C going out. Make a letter C going out. And then from here, can you see those two? I'm basically going to now come into the center of this hoop and the center of this hoop. So from center to center, I make another hoop, okay? And then basically every time that that chalk comes, um, comes down and I stop, I'm gonna start right there to make the next kind of scale. All right, so now I'll come here in my center, make a scale to the next center, make a scale to the next center, and so on and so forth. Obviously on the edges, they're just gonna come off. That's exactly what you want. You're just doing letter C's, meeting in the middle of the previous scale. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing this. Y'all, uh, like I told y'all, I did do these um, on the other fish that I've done. I did this by hand. So, you know, you don't have to use the chalk. I'm simply using the chalk to show you guys, you know, how you can do this in an easier manner as opposed to just, you know, willy-nilly trying to do it. Because after you get that blending done where you really like it, you definitely want it to you know, stay looking good. That one's not quite the best. Here's the good thing about the chalk as well. If you don't like it, you don't like where that chalk line went, you can literally wipe it back off. It does not affect um, your piece. I also, I do like using the chalk when it comes to the eyeball of this piece. Uh, because when I was doing the freehand and I would get to this eyeball, I did notice it kind of stuff would start to look a little off. All right, so basically I'm just kind of continuing this pattern uh, as if it was 
coming right out over here. So I'm going to kind of come up here and meet in that hoop. I know y'all can't see these hoops. They're even hard to see for me right now. Uh, all right, so that's going to be, there's my center. And basically just boop. Okay. All right, I think that's good. Let me just try to show you guys. Kind of just using that chalk and just doing letter C's, open letter C's. And now we can start, obviously, now we're going to grab our script liner and we can start getting uh, that black on these scales. If I could get that chalk back in here. Okay. Now let me grab, I'm going to use that number four royal gold script liner. And I'm going to grab my black. This black already does have some um, water added to it. So it is watered down. Let me see if I could show you guys dripping. It's not dripping really heavy, but it is definitely dripping. Um, I find it easier if your paint is watered down when you're using a script liner. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Jane. How are y'all? Hope you're doing well. All right, so I'm just basically going to start, and all I'm doing is literally dragging this paintbrush right over top of those chalk lines. Right over top of it. That chalk does not affect the paint at all. Your, your paintbrush will literally cover it right up. And then again, if you don't like those chalk lines, no worries. Take a napkin, take a rag, wipe it right off, and redo them. Notice every time I'm, I'm trying to start in the center of each one of those hoops to start my next line. Each one's kind of building off of the other. I don't want black over here, so I'm going to clean that up very quick with my finger. I'm trying to keep that part nice over there. This is going to be cute. Yo, I love, 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 love um, this pattern. I just have, this has been one of those that I find to be really fun to paint. I actually painted several of these um, that we uh, have been selling in store. And honestly, I want to say the purple has been the, the best seller so far out of all the color combinations that I've come up with. Which really, I think the only ones I have at the store are this teal color combination. And then I did um, pink and purple. Y'all also, this is obviously, this is done by hand. It is not meant to be perfect by any means. Uh, but if you are somebody that, you know, struggles with, with freehand, I, I definitely suggest that you um, get some chalk to help you. That chalk will make a really big difference um, in that end result. Kind of going off over here. Sorry, y'all. All right. Looking, see, I see like a little need of that there, and this one needs to come off over here as well. This one needs to come off here. I think this one can do that too. Okay, I think that's good on my scales. So there's a look. All I did was drew them um, with my chalk and basically came right back over top of that chalk with my brush. So now I'm gonna uh, just kind of fill in this eyeball. There we go. And then what direction did I do the eyeball in? I did it at the bottom, okay. You know, sometimes I do it at the bottom, sometimes I do it at the top. Um, a lot of times, especially with the eyeballs, I'll do it one way and then I'm like, oh, that makes it look cross-eyed and I'll end up repainting over top of it. See, already this one looks kind of cross-eyed, even though it's only got one eye. Okay, I think that's better. I am going to also take my brush. I'm going to get that excess off my brush, okay? Just leaving what paint is inside of my bristles. 
And I'm basically putting this brush down and, and doing upward swiping motions, like almost like the scales, but in real, real open C. So I'm putting that brush down, pulling it up, down, pulling it up, down, pulling it up. I'm doing some big eyelashes on there. Okay. I know the eyelashes are hard to see right now, but we will come in. I probably will have to wait for it to dry. We will come in and add some white highlights at the base of those lashes, and it'll help them stand out against um, these scales in the background of everything. Ava says, you make it look so easy. Thank you, Ava. Honestly, I, I know, I know you guys, especially when you're doing something new or, you know, you've maybe not been doing it as long. I understand that, you know, we probably do make it look really easy. Uh, but what I can tell you guys is practice, 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 practice. It will really, really help you guys, um, you know, to achieve the looks that you're really going for. And you know, it's also one of those things, if you have uh, like a blank piece of wood or even the back of a piece, uh, you know, when you're trying to work on a new, um, a new skill, I say flip it over on the back and, and test it out on the back. So if blending's hard for you, you know, use the back of a piece and just work on blending. These scales, if you feel like that might be hard for you, turn it on the back, draw the scales with some chalk, and trace them with your brush and make sure that it looks the way that you want it to look. You can always utilize, you know, other pieces to help you kind of practice. All right, now I am going to put my black up. I'm going to uh, switch and instead of using black on my fins, I'm actually just gonna switch and get a shading pink. Um, I did not do that on my sample, but I think, I, or really, I want to see what it looks like. I think it'll look better uh, with that shading pink <clears throat> on my fins as opposed to black. So I'm going to grab that shading pink. This needs some serious water added to it. Um, that definitely when I'm shading, I add a little bit of water and then when I'm outlining, I add even more water. So, uh, for me, when I'm outlining using a script liner, I need it to be watered down if I'm trying to outline. If I'm using that script liner to, you know, do base coating and get into small spaces, you know, I might add a couple drops, but definitely not near as much as I do when I'm trying to outline. I'm trying to see, this is still... That's still a little thick. You get it just a little bit more. Because I've been doing this so long, it makes, I, I'm, you know, I've gotten a lot better at uh, knowing the consistency before I even take that brush out of my cup and start trying to paint. Um, so that's definitely something that's come with experience that I can tell by the thickness of the paint, whether it will or will not work for me. I'm liking this pink already. So this is just your shading pink. Regular shading pink in our paint palette. And I'm using it just as, as an outlining. That's it. I'm gonna kinda come over here and do the same exact thing. So what we typically, and I got a little black right there, I might have to do a little touch up. But what we would typically be doing with black, I'm just switching that out and using pink. It's, it's, kinda, it's all the same um, you know, type thing that we've always done before. Same thing I just did on the center of the fish. We're just switching that color out. When it comes to lighter colors, sometimes it's that black can just start to get real heavy and I didn't want the heavy part. So uh, Jane says, thanks for showing us uh, the consistency. That really helps. Yes, Jane. Uh, Y'all, you know how much, I, um, how much I've had to learn just through you know, doing it over and over and over and over. So anytime I can, you know, kind of help you guys and give you guys some tips that I feel like I, I could have really used, um, you know, I'm happy to try to share all that with you. Y'all, so basically I'm just kind of coming in now and just doing some squiggly lines. Notice I'm not even following any pattern. Notice the squiggles underneath are not the exact same squiggles. That's okay. You're just kind of wanting that shadow effect with your colors. Then we got one more down here, and then we're gonna switch and we are gonna do our um, the mouth with shading yellow. 
Now right here, my scale is kind of coming over and I can see that black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm kind of loading extra paint on that tip of my brush. I'm gonna set that brush down and just let it be really, really thick in that spot so that hopefully when it dries, you won't see that black underneath there. All right, there's your look so far. If you don't like the pink on the fins and you wanna outline in black, go for it. Uh, I haven't done the pink on the fins as far as outline goes. I wanted to see what it looks like. Honestly, now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, uh, it might need black. I don't know. And wash that brush out. Still sticking with that same brush, this Royal Gold number four. Where is my lid? Here you are. And I outlined this in shading yellow on my mouth and I'm using that same exact shading yellow, or excuse me, I shaded in shading yellow on the mouth. I'm using that same yellow to also outline with. So like we just talked about a little bit ago, the consistency of my paint when I'm shading it's a lot, it's a thicker, right? But when I'm outlining, I always add just a, a little bit more water. That's how I find it works best for me. Um, if you are somebody who's struggling with shading and outlining, maybe you're struggling with uh, fluid brush strokes, or maybe your brush stroke, it goes really fat to really skinny, things like that. Try adding a little bit of water. So this one, see how it's dripping? That's how I want my paint when I am um, outlining. And again, this is just me. If you guys have already you know, found something that works for you, that is absolutely fantastic. You do what works for you. If you are struggling um, and not really having uh, luck, then I suggest that you try adding water. So basically all I'm doing is coming in and cleaning up these lines. I got a little bit of wet black paint there, so I need to wipe that out. I'm still using that same color. Right now it looks the exact same, but as it dries, uh, the script liner part will dry a little darker because the paint is just a little bit more, um, a little bit thicker in those spots. Okay. I got that outlined. Only thing we have left to do is add some water. Hey, Miss D, how are you, babe? If it says, where should, where would anybody put this? Poolside? I think on a pool, uh, definitely. Backyard, that sort of thing. Um, 100% if you have a pool, yeah, that would be fantastic. They would be so pretty out there. Um, but I just think this pattern's cute. I don't even think you have to have a pool. Stick it in your flower bed. I think it's just fun. All right, we're going to switch. We're going to get some of that white. Still keeping that same script liner brush all this, uh, the whole time since I started the scales, I'm still using that same exact brush. My white, way too thick. Y'all, I don't know what it is, but when it comes to white, I even like that paint thinner than I do on all the other colors. Really, really, really thin. That's just me. Me personally, not everybody is like me, but I'm, I, I can only teach you guys what I like and how I do it. Again, See how watery that is? Sorry guys, I had a call coming in. All right, so basically I'm loading this brush and then I'm gonna offload. When I'm doing that white, I don't like very much water or very much water, very much paint inside of my brush. So I'm basically just gonna kind of come in here and you know, fill it in, jazz it up a little bit, do some little squigglies. When it comes to my scales, on every single scale, Again, load, offload. Every single scale, I'm gonna come in and do a C with, with this white. Basically, you're just um, kind of mimicking that same stroke that you did with the black. You're mimicking the same exact thing with the white, just on the inside. Sometimes I'm touching that black line, sometimes I'm not. I really don't worry about it, you know. Just put the brush down and let it flow. If it touches the black, it touches the black. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I really don't tend to uh, worry about that or let it bother me one way or the other. I think that white will really, it really starts to bring it together. All right, now back here, I'm gonna just kind of come in and it, just like we did, we did the same thing with the shading brush and the outline, we're doing the same thing. I'm just kind of bringing some white in between here. And again, just wiggling that brush back and forth. A few wiggles. Turn over, do 
Come on. Boop. A little white on there. Now, my mouth here, I have still have, you, you're able to see some of that teal coming through my mouth from when I did the blending. So I'm just kind of using this uh, white while I have it out and just touching up that mouth. Giving it basically another coat of white so hopefully that teal will stop shining through. Now I'm going to use this white to come in here in my mouth and just add a couple little all right now my lashes are still wet so you know i might have to come back and do this again but basically i'm looking at my lashes and i'm going underneath so right where my line started i'm first off i'm also loading that brush offloading that brush okay scrape that excess paint off you do not want a lot of paint you definitely don't want this dripping i'm going to put that brush right underneath that lash and follow that lash line It's becoming gray, so it's definitely, this is something, mm, something that needs to be done when it is dry. I'm trying to do it for the sake of at least showing y'all. The eyelashes will definitely need to be touched up. Oh, 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 I just put that brush up and I didn't do a dot. I got to do a dot on my eye, y'all. I almost forgot. Boop. Okay. Now. Obviously, my eyelashes, I don't know if y'all guys can see them, but it's kind of like a gray undertone. That's because it's wet, so it got mixed together. But that is my finished look. Um, obviously, we did this morning, if you caught the blending video, uh, if you did not, there's a 20-minute video. It's like right at 20 minutes that we did this morning where we did the blending with the blues on the background. So that background has um, teal, seafoam green, sky blue, and white. And then I came over top, I used a light pink on my fins and light yellow on my mouth. For shading on my pink, I mixed a mixture of light pink and shading pink together and kind of got like a Pepto-Bismol type color and did shading with that and outlined in shading pink. On my mouth, I used shading yellow to shade and to outline. So here is a look with your fins not done in black. And here is the look if you if you want to do the fins in black. Um, this one's just, you know, maybe a little bit more subtle. I honestly thought this one would look better, but I think I like the black better. Sorry, you guys. The store keeps calling me, uh, so obviously they need me. So that's all that I have for today. Thank you guys for joining me. Next week we will be doing the uh, patriotic truck with the, the flowers and the uh, firecrackers, this one. Y'all join me next week for this tutorial. Thank y'all so much. If y'all have any questions, just put them down in the comments. Yes, Debbie, I agree. I think black looks better too. But hey, we tried it. We are trying to see if we like it. We don't really like it as much, but that's okay. Uh, now we know. So thank y'all for being here. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. And I will see you guys next week. Bye, everybody.